This is Saturday morning tropical update. We have a lot happening in the tropics right now, but our focus of course is not going to be on Fiona, Gaston or Hermine. It is all about Ian, which is currently strengthened a little bit since last night. The 8 a.m. update winds are 45 miles per hour still gust to 60 moving west southwest at 15 miles per hour and this storm is about 300 miles southeast of Jamaica itself. Jamaica is in a tropical storm watch. We've got a hurricane watch for the Cayman Islands as well. What is the one thing that's kind of been hindering Ian a bit over the last 24 to 48 hours is a little bit of wind shear. A wind shear kind of disrupts the flow of hurricanes. You notice we still have a little bit of light wind shear on the eastern side of the storm, and that's why we're seeing a lot of the thunderstorm action just on the western side of it. We're not seeing the center of the storm right in the middle of all the thunderstorm activity. Hurricanes do not like wind shear. Tropical systems don't like wind shear. When we don't have wind shear, they can thrive. This is the normal hurricane flow. But when we get wind shear, that kind of disrupts the circulation itself. Sometimes we can have very lopsided storms with all the convection and thunderstorm activity on one side of it. But what will happen is by the time we get to the end of the weekend, wind shear becomes a lot less of a factor. We'll have less wind shear <clears throat> and we're also going to have very warm ocean waters. This is the general cone of uncertainty from the Hurricane Center for Ian into early next week. And you notice the waters that it's moving over. Look at this in these pink colors. These are waters that are in 85 to 90 degrees. I mean, they're very warm ocean waters like a bathtub and hurricanes, tropical systems, they're like steam engines. They thrive off that warm ocean water, the latent heat released from it as uh, it picks that warm water vapor up off the water. So it's going to have a lot of opportunities to strengthen. It will become a major hurricane, but the question is where exactly is it going to go? And that's what forecasters at the National Hurricane Center are going to be so focused on here over the next 48 hours because the impacts are going to be huge for whoever sees the landfall. But a little shift to the west in the guidance versus a little shift to the east in the guidance that changes significantly who's going to be under the gun for those big impacts. So we have the opportunity in between these two areas of high pressure for the storm to move inland, move northward towards either the eastern Gulf of Mexico or towards Florida. But how strong are those highs and especially this incoming cold front and trough of low pressure? Where exactly is that positioned? That's what we have to figure out and models are trying to fine tune that and what they're doing. The National Weather Service this weekend is they're now issuing extra weather balloon releases starting today for just under 50 National Weather Service offices around the eastern two thirds of the US. They're now issuing not just those weather balloon re releases at 0 Z and 12 Z, which is 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. local time here in Georgia, but they're also going to be releasing those weather balloons at 2 p.m. and 2 a.m. each day as well. So that will help us get a better idea of where exactly the we call it trough, the trough access is and how is that going to steer Ian? Is it going to steer it more to the east, steer it more to the west? Where exactly will the final track go? Here's what spaghetti models show this morning. This is where a lot of our different models show the center of the storm going. You notice there's a pretty tight cluster in these that takes it in towards the west coast of Florida in between the Big Bend and Tampa. But there's still some outliers that take it down towards southwest Florida, closer to Fort Myers. And there's still some outliers that take it towards, say, the Florida Panhandle. So there's still a lot of uncertainty with the final landfall location of this, being that we're still, you know, four or so days out from that happening. Let me show you our two uh, main models that we look at. These are the operational runs of the European, the American models. You know, you got to really take this with a still a grain of salt because this is one run of one model one model. This is not looking at the ensembles of those models and um, you know we're getting new data in constantly, but this already shows a difference in the European and the American with where they think this storm will be by late Monday. You notice the American model has it already further west. So as we push this tropical forecast track out to Wednesday nearing landfall, look, the European has it more of a landfall here towards, say, somewhere between Sarasota and Fort Myers, 
versus the American that's had this westward tug almost and where it's been pulling Ian uh, into early uh, next week in middle of next week. So a lot of uncertainty and what does that ultimately mean for Georgia? Well, we don't know <laughs> that we have to do the final track, but I'll show you these models where they think the center of low will the low pressure will be. Once they bring it in towards Florida, uh, the steering currents kind of change and might influence Ian to end up heading back up somehow either up through uh, Columbia or up somewhere in this direction as well. So could we see some kind of influence from Ian in North Georgia? You know, it's possible, but we are still a week away from that. So it's really too hard to say anything, but it does look like we would be on the western side of it, west uh, in relativity to where the storm's tracking rather than on the eastern side. So that would not be the dirty side of the storm with the bigger impacts. However, storm tracks can change, so we have to pay attention to this very closely. Here's the official cone from the Hurricane Center. This is the 8 a.m. update this morning. The tracks actually from 5 a.m. this morning. The next update will come in at 11 o'clock on Saturday, but ha this has it becoming a hurricane by Monday morning or Sunday night approaching the Cayman Islands. They'll likely be upgraded to hurricane warnings here shortly, then passing over the western tip of Cuba and that cone of uncertainty stretches all the way from Apalachicola, the Big Bend of Florida, all the way down to the Florida Keys. That cone of uncertainty is showing you where the center of the storm might go. Remember, impacts can be felt hundreds of miles outside the center. So some takeaways. This is a storm to take seriously. Going to be a major hurricane nearing the U.S. coastline. Likely Florida is going to get that landfall. But where exactly in Florida is that going to be? We still don't know. But significant impacts are likely wherever that landfall is. So you got to pay attention if you have family, loved ones, or you know, if you ha you're watching this video from down in Florida, pay attention to updates in this forecast cone. And now's not the time to panic. Now's the time to think about those preparations that you need to get underway uh, before the storm moves in. For North Georgia, we still don't know if we're going to get any impacts, but something we're certainly watching closely through the weekend as we get more and more data especially with those weather balloons, extra balloons being released into the atmosphere. That data gets put into weather models. Then we get Hurricane Hunter data. They have seven missions scheduled for Saturday inside Ian. So we will get a better idea by the end of the weekend exactly where that landfall will be.